All right, I want to talk about Sorry about that. I need to blow downward away from the mic. All right, something I wanted to talk about, and it's one of those things, it's like, I was planning on talking about a specific issue or a specific article or thing that's happening, but one thing kind of led to the other, to another, and it sort of like sent me down this whole different path of, of, of thought that I kind of wanted to, to share. Now, uh, the reason for this picture is that uh, on, over the weekend, or on Friday, uh, the White House has officially stated or confirmed that they will be approving TransCanada's Keystone XL pipeline by this Monday. Or, I probably won't be uploading this video today, it'll be a Monday thing. I'm just today from you watching it today because I'll probably put this video up tomorrow uh, it's Sunday now I'll probably put it up on Monday anyway uh, so they announced that they're going to be uh, approving the pipeline and all those various things like oh look see just like I promised you know the 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 Trump the Donald is producing jobs is gonna gonna put America back to work good jobs you know all 35 of them uh, so, and, and that's the thing, that's the, the key issue I want to talk about here, is that I, I will link to some, some very good, uh, some, some very good, uh, literature on this pipeline, and all the ins and outs of it, uh, nothing, basically nothing has changed since the last time they tried to, to, to build it, and it was blocked by the Obama administration, it's still bad, it's still not going to really affect our economy in any positive way, and it's still not going to create jobs. Uh, and it's still going to be an extreme hazard to the environment. So, but what I wanted to talk about in relation to this is the use of job creation as a, a justification for practically every shitty thing that corporate America wants to do. Because, all right, the, the, okay, now, so in this case, of course, the pro pipeline folks have have like constantly brought up that that you know okay the pi pipeline will create you know much needed good paying jobs you know however you know even the state department even now under you know exxon mobil's former ceo running it even now the state department is standing by the numbers that it has saying that in the end this pipeline's only going to provide about 35 permanent jobs. But they're still but that's still what they're pushing. Oh, it'll create jobs. It'll create jobs. It'll create 35. All right, we've got millions of people that need jobs and the idea of pushing a project because in truth it'll provide less than 40 jobs is is ridiculous. It's like you know, it's like being a, a freaking multi-billionaire and actually stopping on the street, bending over to pick up a penny. Like, it is it is less than a drop in the bucket. It is insignificant as far as the effect it will have on, on our unemployment rate. Especially considering the negatives. You know, this pipeline is going to carry some of the, the nastiest crude in existence. Uh, tar sands crude from Canada to uh, probably Koch Brothers owned refineries in Houston or in, in Texas to be refined and, and you know this stuff it produces more carbon dioxide it produces uh, I forget all the other chemicals but basically a number of greenhouse gases that this ship puts off when it's refined and it does like a lot more than than regular standard crude oil and to in addition to that it's also very expensive to uh harvest or to to obtain because it basically requires like steaming and washing this like tar sand material like to get the oil out extract the oil from the sand that it's in uh that's why until now it hasn't even been a viable op commercially viable uh because it's 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 expensive 
and there are a lot of things. Like I said, it's just one of those, I, I don't want this video to become another 35 minute long rant. So go to the articles in the description that I linked to. It'll, it'll tell you all about it. So, okay. My main thing is job creation and how it's being used by people on both the left and the right as, as basically a code word. You know, it's like, you know, basically they, 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 they throw in, it will create jobs into just about any plan they can come up with that sucks. That for some reason is going to have a detrimental effect overall, but, oh, it'll create jobs, so it's good. And really when you think about it, that, this is partially my little kind of conspiracy theory, conspiracy theorist part of me kind of piping up here, but I got to thinking about that, and what if that, what if that's the plan, you know, is to keep job numbers low, to keep things like, like, you know, and some I've noticed that, you know, the, so, and, and basically my, my fear about that is, is essentially that what if fear is, anyway okay again my little conspiracy theory of the day what if uh, job creation has basically been co-opted by corporate America to uh you know, as a way of distracting people from what they're actually doing, from what's actually going on. So you need to think about it. You know, it, it makes sense. Like, like the the goal of, you know, the goal of the people who, who is like one of the main practices that most of the people in this country that that want to do shady shit has been, has been basically to scare people. You know, you wave something scary in front of them and be like, "Boo! Look at this." Don't don't look at what we're doing over here, but th this evil thing is you know you know like like back in for instance back in two thousand one uh, during the 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 nine eleven attacks or after them you know at that time everyone was just like the whole country was scared silly of terrorism and attacks and and everything and and you know Al Qaeda and Bin Laden and everything else to the point that. You know, you were like, you know, if you got on a news media outlet and actually spoke up against the government or going to war with in Iraq or Afghanistan, you'd get fired. You get take, you get kicked off the friggin' air. And there were were uh, uh, hosts on news networks that did that. You know, they spoke out against the war, the go stuff, but the country was all in such a worked up in such a froth over it that you spoke out against it, you're gone. Despite the the lack of evidence, despite the lack of weapons of mass destruction, despite the lack of, of any proof that, you know, Saddam helped Al Qaeda in any way, you know, no, we had to go into Iraq. And what what pisses me off about that situation, or what kinda of gets on my nerves at that, is that you know Basically, while the whole com country was was paralyzed with fear, a number of corporations, you know, including then Vice President Dick Cheney's corporation, Halliburton, basically used the murder of over three thousand citizens as like an opportunity to make like literally tons of money. Like literally, like if you stacked it in cash, it would be several increments of 2,000 pounds worth. You know, and one that's, to me, that's disgusting. Okay? You're using one of the greatest tragedies in recent hist American history as a way of padding their bottom line, which, for me, is, is part of the reason I, I, I have such an issue with a lot of these companies, is that, it's, again, you think they care about you? Like you think that these people like they care about 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 anyone other than or anything else other than making money? They don't, and they've they've demonstrated it time after time. But anyway, I'm moving on. You know that's that's one portion they were using like terrorism and and you know terror attacks and and 9/11. Everyone to to scare people into this 
this, you know, these wars that made a lot of people a lot of money. You know, now am I one of those of the 9-11 truthers that think it was an inside job? No, I, I, I don't. It, for that to happen, it would have to be such a massive cover-up that someone would have leaked it by now. However, I do believe that those bastards saw an opportunity to make money off of that tragedy, and they pounced on it, which is, in my opinion, is sick. So now we fast forward to today. You know, we have the 08, you know, the, the economic, the Great Recession. And we have things are coming back, coming back, coming back. You know, the market's like hitting record highs and everything. But, you know, over like half the country, but even though even though we're, we're like, you know, posting record high, like record profits and, and record highs in the, in the markets and, and in the economy, over half the country is making less than 30000 a year. And now we have a population that's, you know, maybe, you know, now we have a population that's scared to death not of, of terrorists or attacks or whatever, but they're scared of losing their job. They're scared of not being able to pay rent or not being able to afford their car note, uh, you know, much less being able to, to save for their kids' college or be able to retire someday. And now... You have, you know, and now you have like a double, like a, a, a bonus, like a, a twofer here. Because one, you've got a, again, you've got a population who's like, uh, like screaming for more jobs and better paying jobs. So that it becomes like the n- number one priority and talking point with, with politicians. Oh, we're going to bring jobs. We're going to create jobs, even though they don't. But in addition to that, now you have all these people who, even if they're employed, they're employed doing something that's like a friggin' low-wage shit job that they have to work their friggin' ass off just to be able to pay their bills. And because of that, they can't afford to go in and protest. You know, they can't afford to, say, go to a protest and be arrested and miss out on a day or two of work. They can't afford to spend time staying up on politics and what's going on in their country because they've got to work two jobs and all the time and so then that in addition so now you have a population who's willing to let a lot of things slide because they need better jobs in addition to that as long as they have those shitty jobs they're not paying very close attention to what's actually going on And that is like this sort of perfect storm of of, uh, of evil, really, in my opinion, that's being done uh, by by these companies, by corporate America in general. Uh, And that is that essentially, okay, these, you know, and if, you know, so basically what they're doing is, okay, the guy that is... uh, and now what I feel is the true evil part of it is when you think of sort of the chain of events, like well, the whole process here, is that we have, you know, the corporations creating the problem, which is not paying their employees enough, not giving enough benefits, not having enough jobs, trying to automate everywhere they possibly can, and squeeze every ounce of productivity out of someone that they possibly can without making them drop dead. Okay, so it's a problem of their own making. So, the corporations created the problem. The corporations maintain the problem, even though, as in general, they're doing amazingly well. They somehow, you know, they can give their CEOs raises, but they can't give their workers raises. Or provide better benefits, or anything like that, or better retirement. That they just can't afford, but they can afford bonuses for their CEOs and, you know, buying new corporate jets. So they create the problem, they maintain the problem, then they buy the politicians to, so that the politicians can go and say that, no, 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 it's not the companies, it's the government that's the problem. We need to, you know, we need to push through this, like, legislation, various deregulation 
that, that then hurts the people even more. And then once the dust settles from that and those that deregulation and those pro-corporate legislations make the problem even worse, the corporations then turn around and blame the government that they bought for causing it. And people believe them. You know, partially because they can't afford to not believe them. They, they can't, they don't have time. You know, they, they can watch a bit of news at night and say, oh, see, corporations are saying, you know, companies are saying that they just can't, you know, they're ta being taxed too high so they can't be competitive. Well, okay, well, I guess that makes sense. My taxes fucking suck. But they can't, they don't have the ability, even have the ability to, in some cases, to look any deeper than that. Because, again, they want to keep their shit job and, and, and be able to can at least be able to keep their head somewhat above water. They got to keep their no their head down and a nose to the grindstone because, you know, if they, so, you know, because if they don't, they're going to end up fired or they're going to end up working someplace even worse. And yeah, I think it's it's disgusting. It's an evil concept for these these uh, organizations, these these corporations, to do this to their people or to do pe this to people in general. Like this is a system that is entirely entirely centered around basically making people's lives as miserable as they can tolerate, as stressful and as stressful and depressing as they can bear. And then using that to help continue that process. And it's just, I don't know, to me, man, it's sick. It's something that, you know, we got to stop it. You know, and I will offer this before I go, like, oh, doom and gloom, bye. No, I think there is things that could be done. Uh, interestingly enough, they're all populist uh, progressive policies, too. That, you know, like, for instance... Uh, for one thing, a fifteen dollar minimum wage. Healthcare, it's because that's another thing that used to be a big thing that tied someone to a job. And if you had an illness that required medication and you you had insurance through your company, well, okay, well now I don't want to leave my current job because if I go somewhere else, they're not going to cover th my illness because it'd be a pre-existing. So that was something that they used to keep people in in check and, and at their jobs, even if the jobs weren't great. Then they may now it's uh, like minimum wage, because like the minimum wage is so low you can't survive off of that you can't pay you can't provide for a family off of that. So now if you're able to find a job that doesn't pay absolute shit you gotta stay there because there might not be another another place in your area that pays anywhere near what that where you're currently at pays for doing the same work. So now they've got you stuck. And they can be a crap company, they can treat you like dirt, they can work you to death, but you can't leave because if you do, you're going to lose what little what little bit of money you have, and you're going to end up going under. So a $15 a minimum wage that is a livable wage would fix that. You know, when you're at a, when you get a minimum wage, it's at a point that you can actually survive off of it, then it opens up all kinds of opportunities. Because, for instance, say 15, you had a $15 minimum wage right now. To everyone who's making less than $15 an hour right now, or even if you're making slightly more, say you're making $16 an hour, and you don't want to leave your job because there aren't really many jobs that pay that much or, or better or anything like that doing the kind of work that you do. Well, if minimum, wa if minimum wage were like $15 an hour, a, a rate that you could actually live off of, then that opens up all kinds of opportunities for you. And it makes your employer much more concerned. Because if you could go, like me personally, I would be fine working for minimum wage if it were $15 an hour. Because one, I could actually live off of that decently. And two, you know, if you're working at a company and you're making $15 an hour, that is the minimum wage, you don't have to put up with their bullshit. It gives you, the worker, an extra bit of, extra thing to bargain with. Because you can tell the employer, hey, pal, 
I don't have to put up with your shit. Okay, I could literally, I could go and flip burgers at McDonald's and make the same amount of money I make here. So mind the tone. And see, so it, it opens up a lot. It's more than just having more money. It gives you, it, it gives you more, more leverage. When, when you could seriously just say, tell them to go to hell and go work at McDonald's or go work at Walmart and actually make a livable wage, then they can't get away with as much. They can't hold that over you and say, hey, you know, you actually make a lot more than, than minimum wage here. You make a lot better money. It would be a shame if something were to happen to that paycheck of yours. They don't have that power anymore. Unless, of course, they wanted to pay you, you know, $30 an hour. <laughs> but then again, honestly, for 30 bucks an hour, I'd put up with a lot more shit, too. So there's that. And also education. Like, you know, we, we have all these low-paying jobs. And, uh, oh, oh. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off there because uh, this, this thing is getting way too long. I did not want this thing to end up being like freaking 30 minutes and it's already 20. So I, I, honestly, I talk too much. But hey, you know that's that's the point of doing this, sitting here and talking. So probably it'd be worse if I couldn't talk this long. So anyway, again, getting off topic. Damn. All right, that's it. I'm going to shut up now. I said, Keystone XL Pipeline. It's not a done deal yet, but it's getting there. Uh, links in the description for more information about the pipeline itself. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, dislike, whatever. And I'll see you next time.